So finally, let's take a look at more tools and techniques that we can use to keep our internet experience safer. Our theme of not relying completely on our technical defenses continues here. We've talked a lot about antivirus in the past, and recently antivirus companies have been admitting that they just can't protect us against everything bad out there. The CEO of Trend Micro stated that nobody can detect five and a half million viruses. And Symantec came out and wrote that you actually have to go beyond antivirus and actually lock windows down if you want to make sure your computing environment is actually secure. So what we're going to focus on today is called compartmentalization. Now we've talked in the past about keeping your super important stuff separate from your fun stuff, like not doing your banking on your kid's computer. And if you can, keeping a separate device that you use for important stuff like finances and using a separate device for casual browsing. Today what we want to do is discuss another aspect of compartmentalization, which is the compartmentalization of data. This comes from Andrew Case's excellent write-up on the subject and involves protecting against scripting attacks, among other things. Now, a point of clarification here. What we're going to discuss is recommended for home use. Yes, you can apply these tools to work as well, but there are business reasons for the way things may be configured at your workplace. And so you should always contact your business IT support before changing those things in any way. And all of the tools that we will discuss today are free. So first, let's talk about Internet Explorer. Unless you absolutely have to, just don't use it. It lacks many of the plugins that we're going to talk about, so you really can't easily modify the browser to meet the needs that we're going to discuss today. The same also applies to Safari. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on using two browsers instead of one. We'll use both Firefox and Chrome. Let's start with Chrome. Chrome has a very mature security model, so I use it for all my important stuff, like banking, online services where I store important data, destinations where I use my credit card, that sort of a thing. Chrome is built with this added layer of protection known as a sandbox, and that builds a contained environment that keeps malware and other security threats from infecting your computer. So if you were to open a malicious web page, the browser's sandbox prevents that malicious code from leaving the browser and installing it to your hard drive. The problem with Chrome? is that Google wants to know everything about you. And so in order to make your privacy more tolerable when using Chrome, be sure to go into the privacy settings and uncheck everything, and then just check the box that says, send a do not track request with your browsing traffic. Now this is an optional setup, but I really like this tool a lot. Since I use Chrome for my super important stuff, I want to be able to tell Chrome that it can only go to those websites. That way, if the site were to get compromised and try to send me elsewhere, Chrome wouldn't allow it. And this plugin, known as BlockSite, does just that. I can configure it on the fly to allow Chrome to go where I want it to, but since I usually only use Chrome for the same sites over and over again, it only needs configuring the first time you visit a site. Now let's talk about some of the must-have plugins for both browsers. The first is called HTTPS Everywhere. And this plugin provides a fantastic service. If an encrypted HTTPS version of a website is available, it will take your browser there for you automatically so that you're taking advantage of the security protections of encryption so you don't have to worry. The next thing is ad blockers. These are plugins that block most third party advertisement sites. Remember earlier when we talked about malvertising as a delivery mechanism for malware? Well, this is an interesting story. Recently, Forbes was not allowing users to get into their site who were using ad blockers. It said you have to disable your ad blocker in order to read this content. So one security researcher decided, yeah, I'll go ahead and disable my ad blocker to get in. And guess what? He found malicious ads. There are two popular players in the ad blocking plugin market that are recommended by security folks. The most popular of these is Adblock Plus. But to make Adblock Plus most effective, you must go into its options and uncheck the checkbox that says allow some non-intrusive advertising. Both Andrew and I prefer uBlock Origin. Then there are websites that are collecting tracking information. Privacy Badger is a great plugin that gives you the ability to block offending websites and increase your browsing privacy. Then there's that famous browser plugin known as Flash. 
Did you know that you probably don't need it anymore? Since Apple abandoned it on their phone platform, it has been disappearing quickly. And it's one of the most notorious pieces of software for being left vulnerable on a computer and being used as an attack vector for the bad guys. So get rid of it. Uninstall it. Now, if you absolutely have to have Flash, there is a plugin called Flash Control that you should install so that you have control over when Flash runs, so it doesn't just run automatically for everything your browser receives. But even better, you can do this with all your browser extensions, making them click to play. This enhances your browser security significantly. A buddy of mine runs a great website called Security for Real People. The link is below, and you can learn how to do this and a whole lot more by visiting his site. There's a couple of websites I encourage you to visit to learn more about browser privacy, as well as to see how much data your browser is leaking on the internet. It's very eye-opening stuff. Finally, these are must-use free technologies that we've discussed in past awareness trainings. You can find links to these in the handout, and you are strongly encouraged to check these out and use them. This presentation and past presentations are available on my YouTube channel at the link below. Thank you so much for joining us today. Take care.